Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we will discuss in detail about collections, dashboards and making dashboard interactive. So let's deep dive into it. After using a metabase for a while, you will end up with lots of saved questions. Collections are the main way to organize questions, as well as dashboards and pulses. They are like folders or directories. You can nest collections in other collections and move collections around. One should keep in mind that a single item, like a question or dashboard, can only be in one collection at a time. You will find different type of collections in Metabase. Regular collection, are just basic collections. Official collections, available on pro and enterprise plans of Metabase. Your personal collections, that only you and administrators can see. You can use your personal collection as a scratch space to put experiments and explorations that you don't think would be particularly interesting to the rest of your team. Administrators can give you different kinds of access to each collection like view access, curate access which will allow you to edit, move, or archive the collection and its contents and last is no access. As I have admin account I am able to see all my collections. You can see permission to all your collections by clicking here. In each collection, you can pin important or useful dashboards or questions to make them stick to the top of the screen. To move a question, dashboard, or pulse into a collection, or from one collection to another, just click and drag it onto the collection where you want it to go. You can also click on the three dots menu to the right of the question and pick the move action. If you're trying to move several things at once, click on the items icons to select them, then click the move action that pops up at the bottom of the screen. You can archive an item of a collection or a whole collection if you have curate permission for the collection you're trying to archive. You can unarchive your stuff from collection settings. Now let's begin with the dashboards. We already saw how to create dashboards when saving a question, in our previous video but here we will create it from scratch. Dashboards group questions and present them on a single page. It's kind of shareable reports that feature a set of related questions. You can set up subscriptions to dashboards via email or Slack to receive the exported results of the dashboards questions. A dashboard contains a set of cards arranged on a grid. These cards can be questions such as tables, charts, or maps, or they can be text boxes such as results of questions asked in Metabase. You can add filter widgets to dashboards that filter data identically across multiple questions, and customize what happens when people click on a chart or a table. We already discussed about this feature in our native query builder video. Let's create a dashboard. In the top right of the screen, click the plus icon to open the create menu, and select new dashboard. Provide dashboard a name and a description, choose which collections the dashboard should go in. Then click create. Once dashboard is created, you can add questions to it from a dashboard itself or from a question you want to add. From a dashboard, click on the pencil icon to edit the dashboard. Then click the plus icon in the top right of the dashboard editing interface to add any of your saved questions to the dashboard, regardless of which collection the questions are in. Second is from questions. You can add a newly saved question to a dashboard directly from the window that pops up after you save the question for the first time. Now question is added to the dashboard. Let's add heading or description with text card feature of dashboard. Text cards allow you to include descriptions, explanations, notes, or even images and GIFs to your dashboards. You can also use text cards to create separations between sections of charts in your dashboards, or include links to other dashboards, questions, or websites. To add a new text card, go to edit mode and click on the text card button, ah, in the top right. A new, empty text card will appear. It has three modes, writing visualizing and previewing. Visualizing will open an editor for text card. You can choose different options here. You can use markdown to format the text in your text card, create inline tables or code snippets, or even embed linked images. Toggle between edit and preview mode. Click the eye icon to see what your formatted markdown will look like. You can move around or resize your cards as you see fit. Just click the pencil icon in the top right of a dashboard to enter the dashboard's editing interface. You can move and resize the cards in the dashboard to your liking and they'll snap to the grid. Once done save your changes. Now let's see how to change the question's visualization settings on a dashboard. Click on the pencil icon to enter dashboard edit mode. Hover over the question you want to edit, and click on the palette icon to edit the question's visualization settings. You can pin dashboards to the top of a collection. You can make your dashboards to look into full screen mode. 
To enter full screen mode, click the full screen icon in the top right of the dashboard. You can switch between nighttime view and daytime view. If your data updates frequently, you can set up your dashboard to refresh automatically by clicking on the clock icon. You can choose different timer intervals for your dashboard. If your Metabase administrator has enabled public sharing on a saved question or dashboard, you can go to that question or dashboard and click on the sharing icon to find its public links. Public links can be viewed by anyone, even if they don't have access to Metabase. You can also use the public embedding code to embed your question or dashboard in a simple web page or blog post. Archiving a dashboard removes the dashboard from searches and collections. Archiving a dashboard does not archive the individual saved questions on it, it just archives the dashboard. You can see revision history. You can duplicate the dashboard and can give new name and description to it. Move the dashboard to new collection. Next we will see dashboard filters. Whenever you want nearly identical copies of the same dashboard, with just one different variable, you can use dashboard filters. To add a filter to a dashboard, first click the pencil icon to enter dashboard editing mode, then click the add a filter button that appears in the top right. You can choose from a number of filter types. Time, location, ID, other categories. The type of filter you choose will determine what the filter widget will look like, as well as which fields you'll be able to filter your cards by. Let's add a filter widget to our dashboard. We'll select a time filter, and then select the month and year option. Metabase will display a filter editing interface where you can wire up your new filter to each applicable card. Each card will feature a drop-down menu where you can select the column to filter. The sidebar on the right displays the settings for the current filter. The filter will only be applied to the cards you select. So here's what we're doing. When we pick a month and year with our new filter, the filter needs to know which column in the card to filter on. For example, if we have a total orders card, and each order has a date ordered as well as a date delivered column, we have to pick which of those columns to filter. Do we want to see all the orders placed in January, or do we want to see all the orders delivered in January? So, for each card on our dashboard, we'll pick a date column to connect to the filter. Before we save our changes, we can use the right sidebar to customize the label of our new filter, or set a default value. When you're finished wiring up the filter, click done at the bottom of the sidebar, then click on save in the top right to save the dashboard with your new filter. Once you've added a filter to your dashboard, just click on the filter to select a value and activate the filter. To stop filtering, just click the blue X now you can change month and see the dashboard updating accordingly. You can do different actions with filters. For example, editing a filter, reordering it, setting default values etc. To do so, click the pencil icon to enter dashboard editing mode, then click the gears icon button on the filter you want to change. If the column you're using for a filter has more than 100 unique values, you'll automatically see a search box with autocomplete suggestions. Columns with fewer than 100 distinct values will list all options. You can also link filters so that a child filter knows to limit its choices based on the activation of a parent filter. Say you have two filters, one to filter by state, the other to filter by city. You can link the city filter to the state filter so that when someone filters by California, the city filter will know to only show cities in California. In this case, state is the parent filter, and city is the child filter. Let's create the state and city filters first, same as we created time filter before. Adding state filter and binding it to the dashboard. Now adding city filter and binding it to the same dashboard. To link filters, you'll need to set up this parent-child relationship. And you set up this relationship through the child filter. In the above scenario, with a state and city filter, we'd edit the child filter, city, by clicking on the gears icon on the city filter. From the filter sidebar on the right, select the linked filters tab. Here you can limit the current filters choices. If you toggle on one of these dashboard filters, selecting a value for that filter will limit the available choices for this filter. In this case, we toggle on the state filter, the parent, to limit the choices for the city filter. Now save your changes. When states are selected, the city filter will limit its choices to cities in those states. Click done. Then save to save the dashboard. Now let's have a look at interactive dashboarding. You can customize what happens when you click on questions in your dashboard. By default, when you create charts, it let you click on a chart to explore further. But if you want more customized click path, 
Metabase allows you to customize what happens when a user clicks on a chart or table in your dashboard. You can set up a dashboard card to 1. Send the user to a custom destination like a dashboard, question, or custom URL. 2. Update a dashboard filter. To configure this interactivity, you need to use the click behavior option on a dashboard card. From your dashboard, click on the pencil icon to enter dashboard edit mode. Hover over the card containing the question you want to customize. Metabase will display a menu at the top right of the card. Select the click behavior option. It will slide out the click behavior sidebar. With different question type, you will see different options under this sidebar. For example, questions composed using the query builder will show open the Metabase action menu. Go to a custom destination. Update a dashboard filter if the dashboard has a filter. SQL questions will only have the option to go to a custom destination and update a dashboard filter. For questions composed using the query builder, the default click behavior is to open the action menu. Now let's try to change this default behavior to custom destination. Possible destinations are dashboards, saved questions and URLs. Once you select the column that contains the value you want to pass, the sidebar will display the column used to pass the value, as well as the target filter at the destination that Metabase will pass the value to. In the example here, when I select a question as a destination, it shows available columns. Selecting product to category column and saving the changes. Now click on the dashboard and you will see it's navigating to the linked question with the search values and its result. Next let's see how to use a chart to filter a dashboard. If your dashboard contains at least one filter, you can set things up so that clicking on a chart in the dashboard will update a filter. Let's start with the cross-filtering demo. Here's the dashboard we're going to wire up. This cross-filtering dashboard shows information about orders in the sample dataset which comes with the Metabase. We want to set up this dashboard so that when people click on a state in the map, the dashboard state filter updates and filters every other card except the orders by state card. Default click behavior of a card is to show action menu. We also want to wire up the dashboard so that when people click on a category in the bar chart, the category filter updates, and all the cards except the orders by product category card update to filter orders by that category. We already saw how to add filter and how to wire up the cards to that filter in this video. Now let's create, state filter and wire up it to all the cards except the card we want to use to update that filter which is orders by state card. This way, we can click on different states, and the other cards will update to show orders from users in the click state. To implement this, enter into the dashboard edit mode, select filter as location and select user state from drop down. Now we want to change the click behavior of orders by state card. Hover over the orders by state card and click on the click behavior icon. Metabase will slide out a click behavior sidebar. Since we want the card to update the state filter, we'll select the update a dashboard filter option. We'll select the state filter, and pass the value of user right pointing arrow state to the filter. Let's save our changes, and try out the new click behavior. If we click on Texas, the dashboard will filter the other cards for orders by users from Texas. Now let's move on to set up the orders by product category to update the dashboard's category filter. Add a category filter to filter the dashboard by product right pointing arrow category. Wire up every card except orders by product category to the dashboard's category filter. Set the click behavior on orders by product category to update the category filter by passing values from the product right pointing arrow category column. Let's save our changes, and we're done. You can click on different states and different categories to see the dashboard cards updating accordingly. We have a dashboard that people can cross filter by state or category simply by clicking on a chart. Next thing we will discuss is multi-series charting. When we visualize data side by side with other data, it adds context and clarity. You can take more informed decisions with this type of data visualization. There are two main ways to visualize data side by side. 1. Ask a question that involves multiple dimensions. For example, the count of users by region over time. 2. Combine two saved questions that share a common dimension, like time, on a dashboard. For example, you could look at revenue over time and costs over time together. Let's see first type of creating the multi-series charting by running a demo. Click on ask a question button and select simple question. Select the people table. 
click on the summarize button in the upper right, then add source and create it as groupings, the count of rows metric that we want is selected by default. Be sure to click the plus button to the right of your selection, so Metabase knows to add the grouping, otherwise, Metabase will switch to that grouping. Metabase will automatically display a multi-series line chart visualization of how each referrer has performed for us. You can also create a multi-series chart by composing a custom question in the notebook editor. All you need to do is summarize your data. Now let's see second type, combining two saved questions. Add a question with a dimension like time or category to a dashboard. While in edit mode on the dashboard, hovering over a card will display some editing options in the upper right of the question. Click on the add a line option. In the edit data modal, you'll see the original question on the left with a list of compatible questions you can choose from on the right. Search questions to add, and check the box next to each question you'd like to see alongside with the original. Metabase will add the questions to the same chart. To remove a series, simply uncheck its box. Once you have your chart looking how you'd like, hit done. Metabase allows you to add values to multi-series charts. From the visualization to display options, you can toggle the option. Let's discuss about dashboard subscriptions. Dashboard subscriptions are a great way to keep you and your team up to date on the data that matters most. They allow you to send all of the questions on a dashboard via email or Slack. If your Metabase has email or Slack set up, all you need to do is create a dashboard, add subscribers to it, and tell Metabase how often you'd like to send out an update. To set up a subscription to a dashboard, click on the sharing icon and select Dashboard Subscriptions. Metabase will slide out a sidebar on the right with an option to set up a subscription via email or Slack. Note down if email or Slack setup is not done, it will ask you to do it first. Let's first set up the email here and come back to this page. Enter all the details here and save your changes. Now let's go to the dashboard that you want to share. As you can see, now it's showing the option of email it. We'll click on the email it option in the sidebar, and Metabase will give us some options. It will ask you for some information like add subscribers, which actually is registered email address. Determine frequency and timing. Send email now sends an email to all subscribers. If there are no results, we can tell Metabase to skip sending the email. L Metabase if it should also attach results to the email, which will include up to 2000 rows of data. You can choose between CSV and XLSX file formats. Once ready click on done. And now your dashboard subscription is activated. You can also set up an alerts for your questions. There are often times when you want to be alerted about something. Metabase has a few different kinds of alerts you can set up, but to use them, your Metabase administrator must configure it so that it can send email or post messages to Slack. Open a question where you want to set the alert. If email or Slack is set up in your Metabase, we can click on the settings button on left bottom and turn on goal line. Then enter the required value in the box below the toggle switch to tell Metabase that we want to be notified whenever there are more than this value. If we save our changes and then click on the little bell icon in the lower right, we can set up an alert. Since we have set a goal line, Metabase automatically asks us if we want to be told when the answer to our question goes over it or under it. It will ask you for the first time alert or every time alert. And last thing it will ask for email or Slack message. Now you will be get alerted as per the settings. That's it for this video. We covered collections, dashboards, dashboard subscription and alerts available in the Metabase. Hope this video is useful. Thank you.